Now, I'm going to demonstrate stuff practically using GNS3. But rather than you trying to build this topology and replicate what I've done, you can simply download the PCAP files and then follow along. The PCAP files that I'm sharing are the actual captures that I'm gonna do now. So you'll be able to follow along and also use Wireshark to see the results that I get. In this topology, I've got two Windows PCs, PC1 and PC2. So here's PC1, here's PC2. PC1 has IP address 10.1.1.1. Default gateway is 10.1.1.254, which is the router in the topology. PC2 has IP address 10.1.2.1. Default gateway is 10.1.2.254 which is the router in the topology. So I'm simulating an entire network here in GNS3, and I'm gonna show you how to capture packets uh, or capture frames, and we'll talk about those terms in a moment, and then you'll be able to see what's going on. I've also got a server in this topology. The server is a web server, FTP server, TFTP server, and runs other services. So what I'll do is send traffic from the hosts to each other, so PC1 to PC2, back again, and also from the PCs to the server, and then have a look at the captured packets, and hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on and get an understanding of the frames, packet segments, and so forth, and also get an understanding of how to use Wireshark. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna open up a web browser from PC1 to the server. The server's IP address, and this is a Linux server, is 10.1.1.100. I used the command ifconfig to see the server's IP address. So what I'll do is start capturing traffic between the PC and the switch. Genus 3 makes this very easy. It allows us to capture traffic directly within the topology rather than having to install a hub or a wiretap or something to see the traffic. So I'm gonna capture the traffic between the PC and the switch, and we'll be able to see exactly what's going on within this Wireshark capture. So you can see that we've got spanning tree traffic, we've got EIGRP traffic, dynamic trunk protocol traffic already displayed and being captured by a Wireshark. What I'm gonna do, however, is filter for HTTP. There's no HTTP traffic at the moment. But what we'll do is open up a web browser on the PC and connect to the server. So let's use PC1. Open up a web browser. I'm gonna to browse to 10.1.1.100, which is the server. And as you can see there, a web page is displayed. Now it's nothing fancy, it's just a basic web page hosted on the server. But it's enough for us to see what's going on. So in Wireshark, you can see that traffic was sent from a source IP address 10.1.1.1 to a destination IP address of 10.1.1.100. This is HTTP traffic. You can see the protocol there is HTTP. You can see the length. You can see that it's an HTTP get. In other words, the PC is trying to get a web page from the server. Now, before I go through the Wireshark capture in more detail, let's explain some of the basics that you see in Wireshark. The first thing you see is a frame. Now, in networking, this is known as layer two of the OSI model. Information captured here are known as frames. So this is known as a frame. We've captured an ethernet to frame. In other words, we've captured traffic on ethernet. There are different types of ethernet frames, but ethernet two is the most common. The source MAC address is a VMware host. Destination MAC address is this. So the source MAC address is the PC. This PC is actually running inside a VMware if I type ipconfig slash all, you'll be able to see the MAC address of the host, 000C29, ending in DCD7. And hopefully, that's what we see over here. 
So notice this MAC address is the MAC address of the PC. Destination address is this. That's the MAC address of the server. Notice the MAC address over here. 36E45C409182. There you go. That's the IP address of the server. MAC address of the server. Here's the IP address of the PC and the MAC address of the PC. So in networking, we use the term frame at layer two. You get different types of frames. On Ethernet, typically Ethernet two, but on a WAN connection or wide area network connection, you could be using something like point-to-point -point protocol or PPP or HDLC, or in the old days, you had encapsulations like frame relay or ATM. In other words, the layer two frame changes depending on the physical technology that you're using. Most common technology today is Ethernet. Most common Ethernet frame type is Ethernet 2. So this is known as a frame. Now, just to make it more confusing, in Wireshark, they talk about frames here as well. But this is actually just metadata used within Wireshark that tells us about the frame. So again, this is just metadata. We don't typically talk about that as a frame in networking. This is known as a frame. This is known as layer two in the OSI model. So this is a frame. At a layer three, we have what's called a packet. So when we refer to the layers in the OSI model, we use terms such as frame at layer two, packet at layer three, and segment at the layer four. At layer three, we've captured the IP version four addresses. So this is IP version four information. The protocol used here at layer four is IP version four. What I'll do actually at this point is stop my Wireshark capture so that the capture that I share with you isn't too big. And I'll save this as basic Wireshark capture one. Notice it's a PCAP NG file or PCAP next generation Wireshark file. So that's the file that you'll download and you'll be able to do something similar to what I've done here. So again, Protocol at layer three is IP version four. Source IP address is this, destination IP address is this. IP version four contains a lot of information. Differentiated services code points or differentiated services field, DSCP, differentiated services code points, is to do with quality of service. Quality of service or QoS or QoS allows us to differentiate some traffic types from others. So in other words, we could say, that voice traffic is more important than FTP traffic. So when you make a voice call, it should be prioritized over file transfer protocol or FTP traffic. This is a way to indicate to the network how important the traffic is. A lot of other information is shown in this header, including as an example that the protocol used at layer four is TCP. So at layer four, once again, this is layer two frame, layer three is packet, layer four is segment, at layer four, in the OSI model, we are using TCP here, and you can see source and destination port numbers. HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uses the well-known port number of 80. The server was listening on port 80. That's why when the client made a connection to the server, the web page displayed. The client initiated a session to port 80. The server was listening on port 80. It served, because it's a server, it served a web page to the client, in this case using the protocol HTTP. So it basically has this page, this web page hosted on its hard drive, and it served that page to the client when the client connected on port 80. The client uses this random port number or ephemeral port number to use the correct term. So it connects to the server using an ephemeral or random port number going to a well-known port number of 80. And then you can see here, the application used is hypertext transfer protocol. Now in networking, we talk about the OSI model, but typically it's a hybrid model between the TCP model and the OSI model. At the top of the OSI model, we have application, presentation and session. Those layers are often grouped into a single layer called application. So notice we have layer two here. Layer one is the physical medium. 
So that's not shown in the Wireshark capture. The physical medium here is ethernet, could be copper or could be fiber. In our example, this is just a virtual network, but in the real world, this would be physical ethernet. In this case, perhaps copper. So the physical media is copper. So that's the physical connection. Here it's just a virtual logical connection. So layer one, physical. Layer two, a data link, or in this case it's ethernet. Layer three is network. In this case we've got IP. Layer four is transport. In this case it's TCP. And then the top three layers are kind of combined into one layer, application layer. So notice hypertext transfer protocol. And inside here we can see details such as the client used. It shows up still as Windows NT 10, 164 bit, using a browser Mozilla 5.0. So in this example, I'm actually using Microsoft Edge. That's the browser used within Windows 10. So this is a Windows 10 a virtual computer. In other words, it's virtualized. I'm actually running on a Mac here, recording on a Mac but I'm running VMware, which allows me to virtualize multiple devices within my GNS3 topology. So the Wireshark Capture sees the client as a Windows 10 computer, which is correct. It's using 64-bit Windows. Mozilla is the browser. It's actually Microsoft Edge. And then the server replies back. Notice in the server example, the MAC addresses are swapped round. In this example, I've got a layer two switch. A layer two switch means that it's just simply switching frames, in other words, layer two data from one port to another. It's not trying to route the data from one network to another. These two hosts are in the same subnet or the same network. So the switch is simply switching the traffic from one port to another. So in this example, the IP addresses are swapped around and so are the MAC addresses. Going back to the first example, Notice source MAC address is this, destination MAC address is this. When the server replies, those are simply swapped around. So the server is replying with its MAC address as the source, destination MAC address is the Windows computer. IP addresses are swapped around and so are port numbers. And if we look at the hypertext protocol, notice we can see server says 200 okay. 200 means that the server was able to provide the data to the client we didn't have a 404 HTML error as an example. Some data was provided to the client. Notice you can see here the actual web page that was served to the client. So you can see it says Networkers Toolkit. You can see the PNG file. Notice Networkers Toolkit. And if I look at that web page on the client, notice you can see the output here. It says www files located at var www.html. And if we look here, that's actually what you see. Files located at var www.html. So if I scroll to the right, notice you see the full output. You get to root after logging in. Notice we told you can place files in TFTP boot. And that's exactly what you see over here. So Wireshark has read the HTTP traffic. Be careful with HTTP, it's clear text. So through Wireshark you can see exactly what's going on. Here the client is trying to get the PNG image. So it's trying to get the actual PNG image and here the server, which is an Ubuntu server, is providing the PNG file. So that's the actual file. And you can actually export that and I do this again in other videos, but let's do it right now. GNS3 image. So I'm gonna export that to my desktop. And on my desktop, I'm gonna change that to a PNG file. And then when I open it up, notice there's the actual image. So Wireshark captured all the data from the server as well as the image and that's the image that we have on the server. So once again, to do that, click Portable Network Graphics, because it's a PNG file, and then go Export Packet Bytes. Save it to your hard drive. So I'm gonna save it once again as Genius 3 Image 2, and then I'm gonna rename it. So it saved it as a bin file. I'm gonna rename that as PNG, because it's a PNG file. 
And then when I open it up, you can see that it's a PNG file and there's the actual image. So you can see here it's getting the fav icon and then we're getting something HTTP 404 error, something not found. So something went wrong here. But the point is, is that you can read the actual HTTP traffic. And remember, because these devices are on the same subnet, all that happens is the MAC addresses are swapped around, IP addresses are swapped around, port numbers are swapped around during that communication. So source IP is host, here source IP is the server. So when the server replies back, it's replying back from port 80 to the client. So that was a very basic example of using Wireshark to see what's going on in the network. Were you able to download the PCAP file? Were you able to open it up in Wireshark and actually do something similar to what I've done here? There's no better way to learn than to practically use Wireshark, capture frames, and see for yourself what's going on. I've made it a little bit more simple by giving you some PCAP files, but hopefully they mean something because you're using the actual files that I'm recording right now, rather than just some random file that you got off the internet. Now, please note, it means a lot to me if you provide feedback on the course. So if you're enjoying the video, then please say so. People